A very good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us for this um, press conference with Proteus Captain Dean Alva, looking ahead to the first um, Betway Test match against India. As usual, I would like to ask everyone to please put your request to ask a question on the chat panel. Um, if you, we do not recognize raised hands, so please, if you would like to ask a question, please put that request on the chat panel and we'll take it from there. Who would like to take us into this press conference first? Thank you, Stuart. Uh, hello, Dean. Um, I was just wondering, uh, you know, it's, it's been such a long time since you guys played a test match. Just how hard was it to get into kind of test match rhythm, given that there's been, what, six months since you, since you last, um, you last played a test? Yeah, it's, it's taken us a few days. Luckily, we had um, a three-day build-up uh, at the Wanderers prior to us getting together um, at Supersport Park. Um, so, yeah, it has taken a few guys just to kind of like hit their straps. Um, but we kind of knew that that's going to be part of the process of us uh, building up to this first game against India. Um, yeah, so I know some guys might have been a little bit frustrated by maybe not having the right rhythm that they were used to or accustomed to. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to see the guys uh, finally hitting their straps now and uh, having our last training session today in uh, uh, Super, uh, at Supersport Park. It's, it's good to see everyone firing on the at the right level where we, we kind of expect to be. Colin? Hi, Dean. Uh, you referred to the Indians a couple of times in your last press conference as the best team in the world. Do you think they're the, actually the favourites going into this series? Um, I think it's pretty even, Stevens, Colin. Um, us playing at home, obviously, I think gives us a little bit of the upper hand. They, they are ranked number one in the world. Uh, we can't not look at that. That is, that is something that they've, they've, they've been uh, for quite some time, in my opinion. Uh, just by being a cricket watcher and a cricket fan, um, you, can't, you can't not give them the credit for what they've done over the last while. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say they're not, they're not the best side in the world because they are, because there's a ranking system for a reason. But I think the, the mere fact that we're playing in our backyard gives us uh, still the upper hand uh, going into the series. Okay. Thanks, Sip. So, hi, Dean. Yes. Um, without giving too much away, um, in your wider squad, you've got a lot of fast bowlers and I guess a lot of different options within that group. Um, as captain, do you, do you kind of favour the idea of having three or four blasters, uh, really fast guys you can exploit pace and bounce on the high front, or is there room for a bit of variety uh, within that attack? It's a good question, Ken. Um, I don't think uh, the answer, there's a right or wrong answer here. I think it's, uh, got it, it has to tie in with the style of play that you want to try and implement as a leader. Um, and obviously tie in with uh, the squad that you've selected. Um, being with COVID, I've said this a few times in, in a few interviews already, uh, COVID has obviously given us the luxury of having an extended squad, which um, you're able to tick all your boxes now um, with, with having maybe five or six extra players. And more times than none, you try and fill those spots up with either all-rounders or, or bowlers. Um, so I'd like to think we've, we've covered all our bases when it comes to um, uh, uh, a selection headache, I would say. Um, but it's a good headache to have because we've got a lot of guys uh, that have been playing some pretty good cricket building up to uh, the, the series. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to think we, we're still in a good spot with regards to uh, having that good headache, and I'll say that in inverted commas, because um, it obviously gives us the luxury of, uh, of us to exploit a few options. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, there's always the debate if you're going to go in with four, four or five uh, seamers or fast bowlers per se, or if you're going to play a spinner. Uh, I'm still a fan of, of playing a spinner. I think um, Kesh has done an amazing job for the Proteas over the last, say, two to three years. And I think he deserves his spot within this test side. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that we, we've obviously been debating over uh, the last little bit. And I know the coach has obviously gone back to the selectors and given, given the selectors a bit of food for thought. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon, and uh, I'm sure on the 26th, you're gonna see uh, uh, what options we go with. 
Thank you so much, um, Sibokazi. Good afternoon, Captain. Um, um, Sibokazi, I'm hoping that you'll have a second round, but I'll, I'll, I'll go for now. Um, um, Dean, can I ask you, the obvious question this time of the year, and probably a very, well, hopefully an irrelevant question, what do you guys as players, international players, do on a Christmas day, a day before uh, uh, the first test match? Do you guys do something together? Um, um, we actually have a Christmas Eve uh, dinner with uh, all the players, all the families. Uh, I'm sure Christmas Day is generally up to your own, uh, up to your own doing. Uh, obviously, being in the bubble, we pretty we confined to uh, being able to go out and go to a mall or go to a movie or whatever. So uh, that's kind of been nipped in the butt for us. Um, so we're quite confined to uh, our limitations. Um, but yeah, we we tend to celebrate. Uh, our Christmas on on the twenty fourth, and give give the families and the players the luxury to uh, to either re relax and chill for for Christmas Day or on Christmas Day, uh, and just try and be as fresh as possible uh, for the twenty sixth. Thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, Dean, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, Dean, um, I asked uh, KL Rahul this question earlier, and I'll put it to you from a South African context. Um, India, through the past 17, 18 years, have beaten everyone away from home, barring South Africa. Do you feel now that will put even more pressure on them um, to perform, considering that they, they've toured well in Australia, they've toured well in, in, in England, but for some reason, they've always come a cropper in the past seven attempts? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's something that we're obviously wary of. Um, they've, they've, they've improved a lot uh, with regards to their travelling record. I know Vera Kohli has been, he's emphasised on that, on that kind of point that they want to improve their record on the road. Uh, extremely mindful of that. And uh, they've set themselves at that standard and I'm sure they're going to try and fulfil it within this uh, series. And as, as much as I have the power of, of being the leader of this team, I'm going to try and prevent them from fulfilling that role um, or that dream of theirs. Um, so, yeah, I think that makes, an, it makes it an exciting and extremely challenging series coming up for, for both teams. Um, we know we're going to, they're going to come out firing. We're extremely mindful of that as well, but I'm pretty sure um, they know we're also going to come out firing. So, uh, either way, it's going to be an extremely exciting test series. Uh, Miharika, followed by Percy, and then Mark. Uh, good afternoon, Skipper. Uh, my question for you is, uh, what will be your biggest challenge seeing uh, from the Indian team perspective? Like, what will be the biggest challenge for you from the Indian team? Is it from the batters or from the pacers? I would say their strength at the moment is, lies in their bowling. Um, I've answered this question already the other day uh, with regards to their bowling. I think that's their strength. Uh, we're extremely aware of that as well. They, they've had a lot of success as a, as a, as a bowling unit. They've got a, a lot of uh, older spearhead bowlers that lead their attack, and they've got a, a, good, uh, uh, a good backup set of bowlers as well. So, uh, And in being in South Africa, um, I'm pretty sure their the bowling attack will exploit the conditions uh, reasonably well. Um, so, yeah, I would say the, the bowling is, is obviously a strength of theirs. Uh, just knowing that we have our seamers and we've got a little bit of pace and bounce and the wickets maybe do a little bit more in South Africa than it does anywhere else around the world. Percy? Thank you so much because um Dean, I was fortunate to drive um through Pretoria today. Um, are you hoping that you guys will get that desired weather conditions for for the duration of this five day test match? And just the second part of my question, Dean, sorry if this question has been asked in the past, um, I, I apologize sincerely. Um, will you guys have your wicketkeeper Quinton Cock for the for for all three test matches? Uh, just to touch on the first question, um, yeah, obviously the weather the last uh, day and a half has been brilliant for us. It's uh, it's something that we kind of used to hear in the high felt. Um, it's also, there's been a hell of a lot of rain as well, which has fallen the last say, two to three weeks uh, in the area. Um, so hopefully the rain's finished and, uh, and the weather guards can be on our side and, and get us uh, uh, a good first test match uh, underway. Um, to touch on your second question, uh, I'm sure it's already been documented that uh, Quinny is only available for the first test. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately he's he's not available because of the birth of his of his child and and rightly so i mean i think that's his that's the biggest uh, moment for him in his life and uh, you have to respect his his duties uh, to be a new dad and uh, yeah it's disappointing not to have Quinny around but also saying that 
um, a new life's coming into the world and, uh, and uh, we have to respect that. Uh, we've always respected uh, new fathers or fathers to be within our team and uh, family comes first for us. And uh, in the end, I guess for him, it might just be another game of cricket, but um, a lot of guys around, it's, for them, it's, it's, it's maybe a lot more. But um, yeah, we, we obviously respect the fact that Quinny, Quinny is going to become a dad. Uh, Dean, can I can I ask you again about the decision possibly to go with a spin bowler? Uh, you said Kesh has done really well this year, but if I was a selector and asked you just to give me a little bit more motivation, why why a spinner at Centurion in particular? Could you give me a few more reasons? Um, I think the conditions have actually changed a little bit. Uh, playing uh, quite a few four-day uh, games here, being at my home ground, uh, sometimes the conditions have actually uh, turned uh, for the spinners. And bearing in mind, we don't have to worry about the ball not turning on day one, two, or three. We've got to, we got to set the game up for day four and five, where um, hopefully the wicket deteriorates, that uh, the spinner comes into play. Um, Kesh has shown in the past that he's not just uh, a container. He can be a wicket taker. Um, he's pretty um, adaptable when it comes to his different role play that, um, that he can fulfill. He, I think it's one of his strengths now as, as, a, as, a, as a bowler, that he can be a container. And the right time allows him to, he can be a strike bowler for us. Um, I mean, it doesn't, we don't have to go too far down the line, but Kesh has been pretty, pretty amazing for us uh, in the, in the test arena. And I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of skills and I think his his ability to adapt is obviously something that we can't uh, neglect and obviously try and use to our advantage. Cheers. Thank you. And we'll close off with Kanyusa. If there's nobody else who'd like to ask a question, thank you. Um, thank you again, Pogazi. Um, Dean, I, I'll touch on a bit on Stuart's question and on and a bit on what um Duan spoke about in his audio clip yesterday. Um, the first punch, landing the first punch, how critical will it be against this India side that you've talked up the bowling, you've talked up the all-round strength? How critical will it be to land that first punch? Considering that we haven't the poachers haven't played Test cricket for six months, and also um some of the guys in the team actually haven't played um red ball cricket for quite a while. Yeah, first punch is, is important. I think first punch doesn't just stem for test cricket. It, it kind of speaks for other, other formats as well. Um, I think uh, first, plan, first punch kind of gives you a little bit, bit of momentum on your side. Um, if you're able to negate the first hour, first two hours, the first session of a, of a day one test, and, and you come unscathed, I think that works in your favor massively. I think that can obviously either make or break a team early on in a, in a series. So we know um, how important uh, being on the on the on the button it is to to, to throw that first punch. Um, but bearing in mind, we have to follow a process. First punch doesn't necessarily mean you go out and score 100 for naught in the first session or take five wickets. Sometimes it's it's, it's about fighting through the tough times and uh, and trying to lose not to lose any wickets and maybe just taking. Showing that batting line, uh, bowling lineup that you're facing, that you know we've got things under control and that it's not going to be a walk in the park. So first punch is, is kind of uh, there's quite a lot of diversity when it comes to that. It speaks for a, a lot more than just uh, going out and playing flashy, aggressive cr uh, cricket. That also uh, ties in with uh, being sensible and being patient and and backing your defence and backing your game plan, um, not allowing the opposition a, a easy way in. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of it's widespread when you when you mention the word or the phrase uh, throwing the first punch. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody, for joining us. We'll leave it there. Um, have a good afternoon, and we'll chat to you guys um, at the conclusion of day one. Merry Christmas! Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, oh, Merry guys. Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas, everyone. Good luck, Dean. Ciao. Good, good luck. Day. Everyone. Not too many answers tonight, Ken. Stay safe. Don't drink answer, Dean. You should know that. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you very much.